Okay, lesson 16 in module two. Um, the first problem in it uh, is just reviewing the commutative and associative properties. Uh, when you look at this particular problem, uh, you can choose any order you want to multiply the numbers because in multiplication you can switch up the order and you're still gonna get the same answer. So I'm not gonna work through this one. Just a reminder, when everything is multiplication or if everything is addition, uh, you can switch the order around and then add them up in any order you want. Okay, on the second page, go to exercise two. Okay, so you can see in this problem, everything is multiplication. And so what we're doing is we're looking at what would be a good order to multiply these numbers in. So things we want to look at. Um, when I have the fraction one third, what I want to see in that is, okay, one third. What numbers do I have here that three would go into evenly? And so I can see the nine. So I would want to multiply the one third times nine first, um, because that's gonna give me a whole number. So when I rewrite the problem, I'm gonna put those two together so that when I multiply those, I get that. Then the other fraction that I have is the um, negative one half. And so when I'm thinking about that one, I'm like, well, two's an even number. So it would go into both four and negative eight, but I would probably multiply it by negative eight because I know a negative times a negative gives me a positive, um, therefore canceling out my negatives. Um, but you could choose to pair it up with the four if you preferred. So when I write that in my problem, as I'm rewriting it and changing the order of my problem, I'm going to put that next to negative eight. Remember, we're putting negatives in parentheses so that we don't think they're subtraction signs. Like that. So then when I go through to multiply those um, using my order of operations, Okay, when I multiply one third times nine, I get three. And then when I multiply uh, negative one half times negative eight, a negative times a negative makes it a positive. And then one half times eight is four. And then I have the other four down at the end. So now I've got three times four times four. So three times four is 12 times four and that gives me 48. If you need more time to write this down, pause it so you can get it written down, and then go on to the next example. Okay, the next one that I'm gonna work out is exercise five. So turn through and find it. If you need to pause the video till you find it, go ahead and do that. Okay, so on this one, I wanna think through distributed property. And so we've done this with positive numbers. So we're applying the same thing here. So when I go to multiply this, okay, I'm gonna break apart my mixed number. So that is negative three plus a negative one half. And then I'm gonna multiply the nine times everything inside the parentheses. So when I rewrite that, it looks like nine times negative three plus nine times negative one half. Now I'm gonna multiply each of the parts because I have multiply before I add. So nine times negative three is negative 27 and nine times negative one half. When I multiply those, I get negative four and a half. And now I'm ready to add. And when I add those two together, I get negative 31 and a half. And so on this, even though we can use our calculator to even check our answer and take nine times 
negative three and a half um, to check my answer. Uh, you're going to get to a point where some of this is stuff that you do mental math, which you can do a lot quicker in your head. So we're talking about how you break down the steps so that eventually this part of a bigger problem you can do in your head and then uh, move on quickly to other parts. Okay, on this page, under example four, we're going to work out um, uh, the problem here, and then we're going to work out exercise six. So if you need to pause it to get to where I'm at, go ahead and do that. Okay, so you'll see in the directions, uh, using the multiplicative inverse to rewrite division as multiplication. So in the first two problems that we looked at, everything was already in multiplication. And when it's all in multiplication, I can move things around and do them in any order. But before I can do that, if I have division in my problem, I have to change my division to multiplication. So you have to think back to when you were dividing fractions. And if you had a problem, for example, a one half divided by one fourth, remember back when you first started doing this in fifth grade, you changed it to multiplication. You did your keep change flip. So it was one half times four ones, and then you work from there, okay? So we have to apply that concept as we're doing this. So I'm gonna erase this so I have room on this page to write. So I'm sorry if you kept hearing a bunch of squeaky noises. So when I look at this problem, I see division here, and I see division here. So when I rewrite this problem, I still have one, I change that division to multiplication, and the number after it, two-thirds, changes to its reciprocal. That's the flip. So two-thirds becomes three-halves times my negative eight stays the same because it was after multiplication. My three stays the same because it was after a multiplication sign. I have a division sign, so I'm going to change that to multiplication, and the number immediately after that changes to its opposite. So the opposite of negative one half, or not the opposite, the reciprocal of it, the reciprocal of negative one half is negative two. Okay, so now everything's rewritten as multiplication, and so I can go from there. So now I'm thinking about, all right, what can I multiply that's gonna make this really easy? So the first thing I look at is I could take um, one times anything, and it's going to give me about anything. But I also notice that I have a fraction here. And so when I think to myself, what can I multiply that fraction by that's going to give me a whole number? That makes everything else after that easy. Well, I could do it by negative 8, or I could do it by negative 2. Either one of those is going to work. Um, most people are going to find multiplying it by negative 2 is probably the quickest. So I'm going to put the negative two, I'm gonna use my uh, associative, or my commutative property where I can switch the order around and put the negative two next to the um, three halves. You'll also notice that when I rewrite this, I'm not gonna put the one in that's at the beginning because one times anything is that anything, so it doesn't change the outcome of anything, okay? so. I think to myself, if I did one times three halves, that's three halves. So my one is gone now. And so I have three halves times negative two times negative eight times three. And so my order of operations, I'm gonna work through now that I've rearranged them into the order I want them. Uh, three halves times negative two. And so Multiply the numbers on the top. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 divided by 2. And so that gives me negative 3 times negative 8 times 3. And so now I multiply negative 3 times negative 8. Negative times a negative is positive. And so I have 24 times 3, and so then I multiply 24 times 3, and I get 72. 
Now, if you had chosen to multiply the negative 8 times the 3 halves, when you did that, um, you would have gotten negative 12. And then from there, it, you would still go through the same steps and you'd still end up getting 72. All right, moving on to exercise 6. All right. So on exercise 6, I have one division sign. So when I rewrite this um, division as multiplication, uh, I will need the reciprocal of 1 6. So I have 4 and 2 tenths times negative 1 third times, so I'm changing division to multiplication. So the reciprocal of 1 6 is 6 times negative 10. Right, now when I look at those and I'm going to apply my properties and switch up the order, I can tell by looking at this that I want to multiply my fraction, one, negative one third, by six because I know three will go into six. I also know that I want to multiply four and two tenths times the negative ten because when I multiply by a power of ten it moves my decimal point over and it gets rid of the decimal. So I'm going to rewrite them in a different order. And so when I do that, I'm going to do negative one third times six. Oops, don't need that parenthesis there. Times four and two tenths times negative ten. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply these two together. Negative one-third times six, a negative times a positive is negative, and one-third times six is two. I'm also going to multiply these two together. Remember, everything's multiplication now, so the order doesn't matter. Uh, four and two-tenths times negative ten, so a positive times a negative is negative, and four and two-tenths times ten is 42. Now I'm ready to do the final multiplication. I have a negative times a negative, which is positive. 2 times 42 is 84. Alright, go ahead and try your problem set.